friends and family. Today, we are going to talk about the perfume exchange and a few purchases recently that I've done with my YouTube friends. So I, I, I only read about it in blogs. I never even had the exposure to it. Where's the logic in that? I'm sure it's there somewhere. <laughs> And featuring Richard Kiko. Thank you, honey. If you wanna, if you wanna enjoy learning about fragrances while having almost like a most delightful friend snack, you have to subscribe to Richard. Let me just like. I, I ask for your forgiveness. This is really. Oh, I'm even getting like a little coconut there, and I get the impression that the citrus in here would really sort of blossom and bloom and just bounce and behave and perform he's amazing i love him people. anyway amazing channel please go subscribe check him out richard does a lot of sniffing parties perfume exchanges sampling and comparing different niche brands so i'm a big fan and so should you be with that we connected and we organized a little bit of an exchange I accidentally bought a uh, Bulgaria, Bul Bulgaria, <laughs> Bulgari, uh, Bulgari Amarena, which is kind of these almond flower, something, 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 very elegant, but very foreign uh, olfactory profile to me, while I actually was hunting down Rubinia, which I never got. So Richard was interested in trying it and offered me a few things to swap with. And here is what we end up exchanging first and foremost something that i've heard from another blogger ukrainian blogger natasha zolotarova who's also like a pretty famous pianist now she lives in israel temporarily um she highly recommended uh bubble gum and scents and richard was graceful enough to be willing to part with it so i can try it this is generally, to me, the closest equivalent to kind of pop art type of perfumery. The unusual, both cheesy and edgy combinations of ingredients. And Todd Liber d'Orange does probably, is one of the most iconic brands who started the trend and every once in a while throws in a few things here and there that kind of uh, support that tendency. I'm not as contemporary and adventurous for a lot of creations by that brand and similar brands and yet it's always something interesting, unexpected, unusual and fun to try. So, what we get here is this sweet, um, slightly soapy, synthetic kind of chewing gum accord and with juxtaposition of almost alien incense somewhere on the background. It is what it claims to be. You would think that this combination would be plain odd and uncomfortable. Yet it's one of the easiest and most wearable perfumes that I got in the recent times. The bubble gummy nature of it is done in a way that it's not sugary or syrupy sweet. It has this almost ethereal, I would say, if John Malone got adventurous enough to have a futuristic or pop art or kawaii collection, that's what it could be. And yet it's even better. It's, it has this like John Malone quality, the airness, the kind of the beams of light in it. And yet, that kind of slightly, almost like bittery alien incense somewhere lurking on the background. It just gives this a little, little bit, a little bit of a bite, a little bit of an edge. I find that it doesn't really have much of a projection. It doesn't really have much of a trail. It's just a comfort zone. It's like your favorite kind of hoodie uh, type of fragrance. I am going to wear it as my nude fragrance. I'm gonna give it a go, and while being kind of silly, youthful, charming, it still has enough of an edge that it intrigues my nose every, every once in a while when I get a whiff. So I'm actually happy with this exchange. I wasn't sure if it was for me, but that's a really lucky exchange that we
we did. That's not even it. Apparently, <laughs> Richard decided to just load me with amazing and rare perfumes. He has two vintages that he decided to share with me, which are now people are hunting down. Both are travel sizes of, uh, I would say, n late, what is it, 80s, 90s classics. First is Poison by Christian Duo. And the poison here is uh, Espirit de Parfum. I don't think they have ever issued such um, formulation since. So they would look like this. They also came with their own little uh, booklet, which I already lost, as I usually do. And I, as soon as I sprayed it, I realized that it almost immediately took me to my childhood. I swear to God, my mom, I'm not sure if she had poison, but she had something that smelled like it. And this deep, dark, nuanced tuberose that is just extraordinarily sexually charged. Is something they haven't experienced in designer perfumes in a while. The closest comparison that comes to mind is classic pink bottle of Narciso Rodriguez for her. I even have a feeling that the modern formulation of Poisson, Poison, is not the same. This just has such a unique depth of experience that it offers. And Surprise, surprise, I am used to be hypersensitive to tuberose. I don't know if it's COVID, I don't know what else could it be, but I feel that in small doses I actually can wear it and really enjoy the profile a lot. The second one is uh, C'est la vie by Christian Lacroix, the last haute couture um, house. And this fragrance I also he also shared in the travel size. This is the one that's now discontinued, very hard to find, and a lot of collectors kind of try to hunt it down. So I, I, I only read about it in blogs. I never even had the exposure to it. So when we take a look, closer look, we get this very classic, oily, altigitic. I have a few comparisons here for you, and it's kind of like just to, to evaluate, like a hot take on whether it's worth hunting down or not, because this is, oof, everything's falling. This is truly a rare find. So when we're talking about these rich, oily, benzoin plus resins plus carnation plus aldehydes type of perfumes, the two that I immediately went to are, are Carnubia by Pinhaligans. And in comparison, it's almost softer, more flirty, more floral. It doesn't have such a big, deep, slightly oily, animalic core. But they are definitely relatives. So this is kind of like where it sends you, the Celavie. And the second one, I'm going to refresh it a little bit, um, Chanel Coco. That's something you can just go to almost any store and try and just to get a gauge what family of fragrances we're talking about here. Chanel Coco, still not as animalic, a little bit stricter, but with the same heart of a lot of carnation, and it's almost a little bit more bitter, but it's way more streamlined and almost austere. C'est la vie has this teethy, animalic, grabbing nature, similar to Poisson, just poison. This is just sweeter and more like, to me, like Black Orchid style. And this is more, way more toward vintage. If you love Co uh, Chanel Coco, if you love, if you love Chanel Number no. 5, and generally gravitate toward like animalic, old school, um, richness and depth in perfumery, I would say this is still one of those that delivers on the promise. That said, for me it's just too heavy, so I'll be carefully hiding it from the sunlight until I find a true vintage perfume lover 
that um, I can gift it or exchange it. And me and Richard ex exchange scents of fragrances for blind tasting. So I'm very excited, potentially. If you want to join the party where I also sent him quite a set. I'm very curious about what he has to say about the perfumes that I sent him. And um, get ready. If you want to see... If you want to see a sniffing party, if you want to guess together, leave a comment below. We can get that, uh, make, a, make, a, make that happen. Also, I don't know how, but I forgot to um, delay or at least reduce the frequency of my Sandbird orders. So I've been getting a lot of decants, even though for the last three years, I've I've declared a war on my decants and samples because I have way over like 500 and a lot of them are truly Prussians and are just evaporating without getting any use and yet I keep getting new ones. Where is the logic in that? I'm sure it's there somewhere. Anyway, a few things that I've been trying to understand is this whole trend of what I call Instagram niche. It's like Ikea of perfumery, all these cutely designed, very like Instagram aesthetic brands of perfumery. Sephora loves to bring them in and float them in six months. Skylar, Hedonist, or Heretic, uh, this, that. Same with like memoir, archives, deck of scarlet, all kinds of houses of flowers and this and that. Even nest I would put in the same category. It's just, it's not clear what's the message. Why do these brands exist? It's almost like way too many people are trying to jump on the trend, on the trend of niche perfumery becoming nearly mainstream. And yet there's no, there's no cohesive message it's all essentially like duplicates of what Jo Malone does on a regular basis that said every once in a while I try to sample this and that and just to you know see if if it gets any better so to speak any more interesting so I got power suit by the deck of Scarlet and the name intrigued me it also intrigued me that they were claiming that this creamy sandalwood combined with skin mask and cardamom. I love these ingredients. But what I ended up having is yet another lactonic, muted, kind of like these basic synthetic molecules, like eccentric, read eccentric molecules type of profile. It's indistinguishable from dirty vanilla or dirty coconut by Heretic and like a thousands of other... I mean, same with commodity milk. It's just, sure. It's like, sure, but... There's not much to talk about here. Like some creamy Santal with, with very least like new minimalism to it. It's okay. It's something I can just throw in into my purse and or in my car and if all of a sudden I feel like I just want to smell something. There's nothing. You can, you know, spray is like, okay, it smells nice. It's nice. That's it. Uh, I'm a little disappointed. I, I, I feel like it's like wasteful to have that many brands that don't have anything real or authentic to offer but maybe it's just me maybe I'm just getting old which is probably true um, and the one that I decided to try from memoir archives is called by the sea that kind of coincided with me trying to find the, the most beautiful the most unique um, contemporary aquatic like mineral accord type of perfume and by the way I found quite a few that are extraordinary Beach Hut by Amouage being one of the like iconoclasts there. And they, they made it before it became trendy. But when it comes to this, this is just yet another um, white musk, rose, petalia, peony, magnolia, slash lychee 
type of fragrance. I think the Harmonist has a fragrance called Metal Flower. It's n nearly identical, at least in the general impression that it gives. I would call this is like a gym fragrance. Like if you're going to yoga or like just to have a stretch of fairly light session at the gym, you're not gonna like sweat profusely. It's something you can just throw in and you smell nice. Refreshing. It's even somewhat to the same story as Lancome Miracle, even though Lancome Miracle actually has a more distinct profile. But, you know, kind of there, David of Cool Water and whatnot. It's like there's... My name is the Legion. It's... it's too many of them. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's more likely than not I'll just gift them. Talking of truly amazing lactonic fragrances plus contemporary and very trendy mineral accords, I found something on Mercari. This one is so hard to find, the brand. It's called Arquiste. I don't even know. Is it... Is it American or is it European? French? Maybe, probably French. No, yes, no. Here we go. It's actually an American brand. Why do you give it a French name then? Gosh, loud and proud. I thought that was an American way. Arquiste. Anyway, the bottle. It's so beautiful. Oh my god. It's blue glass. I just, I, I'm a sucker for colored glass. Not gonna lie. It's very well made. It's a beautiful and I bought two <laughs> two decants of Sydney rock pool by Arkist from Sandbird and so far this is my the most favorite contemporary coconut fragrance that I own just like hands down if you want to hear about what is it about it's about the golden hour in Sydney this you ready? You ready? Okay, we have another story here. And again about the ocean. Let's see uh, which marketing intern did a better job talking about the Oceanic Accord. Okay, here we go. Arquist, Sydney rock pool. The surf crashes against the sandstone rocks. Your warm skin glows underneath a blazing Australian sky. As you get out of the water, a gentle breeze blows through the nearby jasmine and frangipani trees, mixing with the subtle scent of the sea, salt and rock. Take the moment to soak it all up and dive down under this evocative fragrance. Gosh, it's hard to choose, isn't it? They're very close though. They, they, they kind of used a lot of the same uh, imagery. So they don't say that, that, that this is actually coconut, but that's how I feel. This is the most beautiful mineral accord. It's salty, but it has this kind of like a reclaimed wood feel to it. It's slightly musky. It's for those of you who are not afraid of white musks and even welcome them. I usually don't like white musks, but I love them here. It's this salty, minerally musky woodiness and creamy. To me, it's creamy coconut. They claim it's frangipani. Fine. Just the tropical fruitiness. Two decans. I haven't finished them yet. But I'm like well on, on the way. And one and it's so hard to find Arquiste on sale or like secondhand that I kind of grabbed on, grabbed it as soon as I saw it. Those of you who are now experiencing summer in Australia, kind of sort of like made for you. Again, I think I promised to create a uh, the best of the best of mineral accord in niche perf niche and designer perfumery and I haven't made that video. If it's still needed, if you still want to know, 
let me know in the comments below and I'll I'll make it happen another one that was an exchange with the subscriber was kind of like a just a gift essentially is something that I talked about years ago always wanted it couldn't find it and I guess she just remembered and gave me her own bottle so this is a test bottle of a cheerful almost like punk like flirty alcoholic kind of boozy fragrances this is Jean Paul Gaultier Madame but mind you mind you mind you Madame Eau de Parfum differs a lot in the way that it portrays itself than the Madame Eau de Toilette so the selling point of Madame Eau de Toilette is kind of this flirty very synthetic I would say fruity rose accord but with a slightly bittery punch of grenadine it's both sweet and just ever so slightly bitter it's fun and it's in its um, unapologetic <laughs> juvenile <laughs> laughter it reminds me um, bubblegum incense at the, by Etat Libre Dranche. They're not the same, but to me they give kind of the same mood. So thanks, uh, big thanks that I finally got this bottle. I never, I never acquired it through the years and I essentially forgot that I ever wanted this perfume. I think it's now discontinued so prices on it may, may vary, but it's kind of fun. Okay, I have like way more to show you, but we're gonna finish with these two. Again, a brand that I can't believe I'm gonna now declassify from niche to Instagram niche. Fell, fell in my ranks is Commodity. They came back from the dead. Uh, they resurrected the brand. No, not only that, they are back to Sephora and they also duplicated their main line twice. So all of the usual fragrances you can find in black, white, and plus. So like, I don't know, extreme or like intense versions as they call it. So I just, I found that a lot of commodity that I tried way back when, five years ago or so, it was a nice departure from designer fragrance, but back in the day there were not as many of those niche, Instagram niche uh, perfumes and they were interesting enough compared to designer fragrances, yet you could buy them in uh, Sephora. But at the same time, Sephora once sold Eldo, Etat Libre d'Orange, Sephora once sold L'Artisan Parfumeur and it's almost sad that that's what they replaced L'Artisan Parfumer with commodity. Um, still, I would argue if you are tired of just the mainstream designer fragrances and Jo Malone might be just too light for you, commodity can kind of offer a few interesting options, though I would say at that point Replica by Maison Margiela is slightly more interesting, has slightly more interesting selection. That said, a few things I remembered I liked and I decided to refresh my memory. Uh, first one is Velvet. I'm just so confused now though, which Velvet, if I like it, which Velvet to buy? The black, the white, or the plus? Like, wh wh why? I don't, I, I don't know. I guess I'm not a genius of marketing, maybe I'm missing something. But to me, this kind of tripling the same fragrance with the same name which is a slightly different variation of I don't even know what it's kind of wasteful but okay velvet what really is the selling point of it is that you have clove buds this like almost burnt sugar like rich desert dessert like sweetness with roasted almonds so this is definitely a gourmand even though they try to portray the, the, the kind of the sensation of touching fabric, velvet. 
to me it's way more about red velvet cake <laughs> and it's a little smoky so it has woods vanilla flower rose petals clove buds and roasted almond I would say this is a vanille noir type of scent. I cannot confidently say that this fragrance is worth considering if you're chasing uh, almonds. And I can't say that this is the most delicious and deep gourmand either. Commodity fragrances in general for me kind of fall flat a little bit. To me they often lack depth and they almost never change in time. And like once you, you know, once you're shelling over $100 per bottle, you want something more than just, okay. That said, if you're looking for Vanille Noir, a slightly bitter, slightly smoky vanilla scent that is not edible, Commodity Velvet could be it. This is, I would say, kind of... Um, Throw it in your purse and use it at night if you all of a sudden have a coffee date or you know like you want to stroll down the street for a few extra minutes and enjoy some kind of scent. This could be it. But again, I can't quite recommend it. You see why? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But is it really worth the attention that commodity gets on the shelves of Sephora? Uh, no, no. In my opinion, no. And another one that I was curious about because it seems that it made a lot of talk is Exit the King. Essentially, let me just read it to you. Essentially, a Tatli Borderanche coming back to its shock marketing. Exit the King, a fragrance inspired by the fall of patriarchal power because nothing can rule us. An immaculate blend of petals in overdose, clean foam and tree moss, contrasted with patchouli on the milky skin of sandalwood and white woods. Much ado about nothing, I would say. This is rose patchouli scent. This is what it is. And yet it is indeed soapy, which I think makes it Kind of na nauseating. There are a lot of beautiful, deep, juicy rose patchouli scents. I mean, there are so many, but one that I absolutely adore, but it's kind of pricey, uh, is Rose Barbar by Guerlain. But like, there are more. There, there, there are more, and there are a lot rose patchouli scents for every budget. By the way, please name your favorite one in the comments. What would you recommend? But here, when you add somewhat metallic aspect of jasmine and soap, it feels like you're eating soap. It, it, it's nauseating to me. It's just like, it gives me this weird discontent. It's nauseating, it's somewhat unpleasant because of that, yet every single facet of it in separation is good. It's either something that I would wear and every once in a while just think, eh, what is it on me? Or not wear at all. And when it comes to mm, punching patriarchy, in the face I'm not sure why like conceptually I'm not sure how s soap with jasmine rose and patchouli well, there's some pink, pe pink pepper as well I don't really detect it here how's how is that relevant to patriarchy like what what why how is soap what does soap have to do with it I don't know I just don't I don't get it like strange it's just strange to me to me it's not really cohesive it's well made it's not like the the sand just falls apart and becomes something rather discombobulated you know like something just like everything is shooting in a different direction even though it's blended really well 
just together the impression is nauseating that's that's all i can say all right that's that thank you so much richard and to my subscribers for essentially sponsoring new perfume reviews on this channel let me know what you think of them if you know of any comparisons or anything else that you recommend uh to try or maybe like better than this or worse than that or you know cheaper i'll be waiting for your comments and with that thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video